Amen. Amen. Well, I am excited about being here, and uh, that's literally an understatement. I've been here now almost a week, uh, or actually I've been here a little over a week, and we're heading out tomorrow uh, to fly home, but we're going to leave part of our heart here a little bit in Australia and uh, and then come back. So um, we're excited about this. I, I was here 42 years ago, and uh, that's, a, that's too long to to wait to come back and I'm not waiting another 42 years I'll be over 100 so that won't be good <laughs> I might have it in my heart to come but body probably won't cooperate <clears throat> But we have had a lot of miracles happen uh, while I've been here, and it's so neat because, you know, some of you are at the healing room, some of you are at the conference, and, you know, it's like I'm getting ready to, you know, getting to know you guys a little more. Uh, also, I don't want to forget this, that when I come back, whenever, I don't know when that is, um, but if you are, like, because you're from here and here and here and here and here and Auckland and so forth, and uh, if you would like me to come and minister at your church, uh, or you're going to talk to your pastor, get in contact with us. Uh, it's joanhunter.org is the uh, website. E email is info, I-N-F-O, at joanhunter.org. Uh, or if you have a business card, I'll be happy to take the business card and, and give it to my assistant And when we get some dates worked out, uh, because this is very, very exciting with what God is doing. The hunger here is, is really amazing. It's just, it's really, really amazing. And, and that's what's so neat. It's like the other day we were going to, I'm going to talk for like four hours on at the healing rooms. It will end up to be about six, uh, including over an hour of everybody praying for each other. But the miracles were amazing. The hunger was amazing. Nobody wanted me to stop. That's, that's hunger. Okay, and just the revelation, and then as we were at lunch today, she said, because Julie had kind of given her a little snippets of, of the ministry that I did to the healing rooms, and uh, she goes, now what about this, what about this, what about this, and she was hungry to know, not just for her own self, but so that she can bring it here to the church, and, and that's what's so important is that we bring it, bring it here to the church. One of the things that she was mentioning is that we talked about generational curses. Generational curses passed down through the bloodline. What about a blood transfusion? Ooh. Okay. I have medical proof, and I also have people that I've ministered to that have, uh, had, have had that. And, and how God has totally turned it around and gotten rid of the junk that they're like, I don't know, what this is go you know what's going on here. Also, like a shot of Rogam, which if you, that's what we call it in the States, if you have Rh negative factor and then you have a shot after you have a baby, um, that is a Rogam shot. That is made of multiple people's blood, and they have over a hundred shots uh, that they on a normal basis that has human DNA in it, and we're not aware of it. You just get a shot. Okay, I'll take a shot. Find out what's in those shots. Okay, and uh, you know, if you have to get one, then pray over it before you get it. Pray over it after you get it in your body because you don't want to pick up anybody else's junk. Okay, it's, it lasts a lot longer than if you're around somebody with a cold. Okay, but see, I want to encourage you that in, and I, I ran out of books and, and I have just a few of my CDs left and uh, back there. They're normally 20, but we're selling them tonight for 10. I have probably let 10 left. That's it, uh, which is a real problem because I so much want to just have all, I've got 20 books out and I want to, and so many of them are handbooks and manuals and things like that, but I'm going to ship a whole bunch in next time. Uh, because y'all are just so hungry to know the Word of God and to have manuals in your hands and, and to really, really get free. Not just, you know, because some of you have come tonight to get healed. Some of you have come tonight to learn. Some of you have come for both. Some of you have come to go, we'll see. <laughs> How many of you heard me on the radio yesterday? Anybody here as a result of that? We got one. Okay, we had a good time on the radio. I've kind of figured we'd have a little bit more than that, but that's really awesome. And um, it was a great, great radio interview. I don't know if the guy who did the interview was, is here or not, but he was just like really fascinated with, uh, with just hearing about the word and how people got healed, which is like really awesome. And uh, we have seen a lot of really, really incredible miracles happen. 
um, the, the slogan for the ministry is miracles happen. We, uh, we have t-shirts and we have blankets. We have all kinds of stuff that say miracles happen because I believe that miracles happen. Amen. And uh, when you came in or sometime after you were seated, you should have gotten one of these. If you did not raise your hand, I want to make sure that you have one of these. Okay. And where's charity? Okay. Here she comes. She's armed and dangerous and got some there. And uh, this is your prayer form. Now, on the front, it has a lot of places for information. At least put your name. Anything else you want to put down, that's fine. Then that way we will let you know when we're coming back into New Zealand area. And, uh, and there's, yeah, she's, she, they've got some coming from the back, too. And then uh, the most important part here is on the back. And you think, well, what, there's nothing on the back. I understand that because that's for you. And to put down your prayer request, what, this is what you need Jesus to do for you tonight. Not your family list, not your neighborhood, not your church. This is you. Is that selfish? Absolutely not. Because realistically, if we pray for everybody in here, we're not going to have time for everybody's relatives. But you're going to learn how to pray for your relatives. You're gonna, if there's anybody in here with fibromyalgia, you're going to go home without it. Isn't that great? But many of you in here know people with fibromyalgia. So you're going to learn how to pray for that. Like on this list, right rotator cuff, left meniscus, knee. I don't know how many knees have been replaced here uh, in New Zealand, but I'm going to probably say low number would be 20, probably 30 to 40 new knees. Right there, boop, boop, right in the services, and some with me uh, in the in the pulpit area, some with the prayer team, uh, which is like really awesome. And no blood, it's great, you know, because the blood's already been shed. Isn't that great? Hallelujah! No recovery time, just run around the room. And uh, we've had a lot of people, you know, that have gotten hip replacements. Uh, guy at the healing rooms came in and on a big walking stick, and and he needed a new hip, and he got a new hip. Hallelujah! And uh, because he started doing things that. A young person couldn't do. Hallelujah. Even with good hips. But, but anyway, take a moment, fill this out. Now, while you're filling that out, I'm going to ask a few of you that have been healed uh, over the last like four or five days that I've been here to come up here because I would like for you to give your testimony. So you don't need to fill yours out because you're already healed. So, uh, and I, I already heard like, oh, this one's coming tonight. She wants to give her testimony. I'm like, okay, good. So I'm going to give you a moment to come on up here. The rest of you, a moment to fill that out. Great. And we're going to record right there. I'm going to move this back a little bit. We're going to go up here in front. Because I think it's really important that, you know, number one, you just hear a little bit of what God's already been doing here. And I know there's more than two people in here that need a... That are going to give their testimony. So feel free to come on up. Amen. You can. Why don't you start start off? Because we do have her testimony recorded. Because yeah, everybody knows you here, right? A lot of them do. Yes, them yes. Do. So my sister came up from Hastings. A little closer, yeah. uh -huh. yes. And she had um, had a hip operation, and um, and her hip still wasn't um, working properly. And um, and Joan paid for her hip, and her hip and her back came back into God's divine order, and she was able to um, jump and dance and do all sorts of things she hasn't done for years. Isn't that great? Amazing. Amazing. Yeah. Hallelujah. It was pretty fun. I, I ministered. I think it was uh, Friday night. And then Saturday morning, come in and everybody's dancing and, you know, and all that kind of stuff. Look at this. I can dance now. I got a new ankle. I got a new knee. I got new hips. So I mean, everybody was like, instead of just like sitting down, they were able to actually move in it, which is great. Okay, you come on over here. And then what we're going to do is, is uh, um, you're going to, I'll say hi, and then you say your name, and then you give your testimony. Okay. okay. To, it's primarily to him. We are so excited to share with you some more miracles that God's been doing in New Zealand. Hi, I'm Gwen. Um, I was healed of fibromyalgia and lupus. My back was all um, seized up at the back with acquired spondylitis, and now that's, that's all loose. I had fear of man. That's gone. Um, yeah, it's just amazing. No, no pain, really. I've been at a meeting every day since Wednesday. 
you know, still going. You normally I'd be zonked out by now. With chronic fatigue syndrome, you can't yeah. do that, but no. he'll do that too. <laughs> yeah, so every day. Praise, so praise God. God. Yeah. That, that's awesome. That's awesome. Amen. And so she, we already recorded hers. But the thing, the thing is, I wanted you to understand, she got a little fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue syndrome, pain throughout her body, lupus, back problems, just to name a few. And what? And she grew taller. And, uh, you know, and, and he's like, well, what do you mean grew, grew taller? Well, a lot of time, a lot of you in here have neck problems, back problems. And when God gives you your vertebrae back, and don't, don't ask me to explain it because I can't. And, uh, but he just does it supernaturally. And then, then you get it all back and then you get taller. You know, we had one lady the other day grew four inches. So that was very exciting. Okay, so she's going to give her testimony. Hi, my name's Cheryl. I had arthritis right across my back, down my spine, up my neck, and it was going down my arms and down the side. And I had a bad knee. And so when Joan prayed for me, I felt the power of God go through me. But I felt like as I was being prayed for, my spine was stretching out, and it felt like I was coming off the floor. It was, it was amazing. Honestly, I felt like my feet were off the floor and no pain. I've been totally healed, absolutely healed. I gardened for six hours today, non-stop, no pain, no pills, no nothing. God's good. Yeah. That's awesome. Now, she gardened for six hours and is still here. That's, that's really cool. Okay, you got one too? Yes, Okay, so we're ready. And we're going to kind of start it off like we did the other one. We have, yes, even more miracles from New Zealand. My name's Cedric. A uh, short time ago, I sprained my ankle, and it was really sore, and it's just heaps better now. And not only that, I got this angel of God to pray for me, and I prayed for a friend, Laurie Crystal, who's had a stroke. And... Uh, he didn't notice any difference, but I inadvertently put his glasses in my pocket, so I had to go back and take them back to him about two hours later. And he said, he's vastly improved. That's and awesome. Yeah, yeah. He said, when you prayed. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. you laid your hands on my hands and said, you go and impart it. And I did that, and that's what happened. Isn't that great? It is. That's awesome. awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Amen. Well, we've had several people that have gone from the meetings to pray for their relatives and stuff that couldn't come tonight, you know, and it's like, yes, that one had a stroke, but then there's others that, you know, you're going to see people healed tonight of fibromyalgia. You're going to hear how I pray and kind of the model, and I'll be giving you keys. Uh, many of you have prayed for people. Some of you have gotten some results. Some of you have gotten temporary results, and some of you have gotten no results. But after the few keys that I give you uh, tonight, I've been in the healing ministry for 45 years, so I better have learned something, right? You know, you don't learn everything by just your parents being Charles or Francis Hunter. How many of you were in the services when they were here many years ago? Okay, several of you were, so that's awesome. If you don't have gray hair, then you have no idea who they were, but that's okay. And, uh, but they had an incredible healing ministry. They wrote over 70 books, and I was with them 42 years ago. Then they also came back, I think, in the 90s here and, uh, and just did some incredible uh, ministry here too. So I consider it an honor to come back and uh, to be here in New Zealand. Uh, and I have so longed to come back for so many years, so it's like... Part of me doesn't even want to leave tomorrow, but Canada's calling over the weekend, so I've got to go back to Texas and then to Canada. But, um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you, I'm going to just share just a few minutes, and I'm going to give you some keys. God has called every single person in this room to lay hands on the sick. It says so in Mark, in Mark 16, that you're going to lay hands on the sick, and they're going to recover. Not maybe, not probably, but it says that they will, they shall recover. Okay, does not say you're going to lay hands on them and you're going to heal them. See, that's not the Bible. You're going to lay hands on the sick and they're going to recover. Now, too often times people 
do not want to pray for the sick because they have a fear of them not getting healed. When you have that fear, you take on the responsibility of their healing. Your job is to lay hands on the sick and let God do the healing through you. And when you understand that revelation, you are going to see incredible miracles happen because the fear of you praying for people is going to go away. Now, God has anointed you to pray for the sick here in church, but more so outside. The vision statement of Joan Hunter Ministries is to equip believers to take the healing power of God beyond the four walls of the church, the four corners of the earth. And, uh, and that's your family, your neighborhood, where you shop, and where you work. If you're afraid to pray for your neighbor, why would God send you around the world? Think about that. You can walk up to anybody anywhere and say, God sent me here to pray for you. Is there anything I can pray with you about? Well, did God say, go to the grocery store? No, you got up and you said, I need some toothpaste. And you're going to the grocery store. And your steps, according to the word, are ordained. And they are ordered of the Lord. So as you go out, there are people that are going to need prayer. And you're going to see them. You're going to see them either hobbling or bent over, leaning on the grocery cart, uh, the trolley. You have different words over here. Okay, i got to work on the translation. And, uh, but like leaning on the trolley and so forth, and you can look at them and realize that they've got back pain. And you go, wow, they look like they really hurt, and you walk on. Or turn around, put your arms out, armed and dangerous, hallelujah. When you understand that you walk in the same anointing as me, you walk in the same anointing as Jesus. Because, see, it's Jesus healing through you. He's just looking for a couple of good hands that are willing to be released and then lay hands on the on the sick and you're going to see incredible miracles happen when you start seeing miracles happen in your life it's going to encourage you to do it again now many of you are saying some of you potentially well I, I can't do that I can't do that I can't pray for the sick and uh, you know and it really is that you can I have a, a diagram I've shown it a couple of times since I've been here but I think it's very very important um, that you understand and uh, and it's, it's this little thing that says I can't and I hate the word can't personally but I think God hates it more uh, than me and but the truth is it's not that you can't the truth is that you won't well, I don't see any miracles when I, you know, around me. Well, the reason is because you're not doing it. And see, we need to take our cans over here, take them to the cross. They will become our cans because the word says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And we've got to get, amen. We've got to get out of our, I'm afraid. It, what if they don't get healed? The person is no worse off. Okay? You know, Cedric prayed for the friend with a stroke. Immediately didn't see the results. Just happened to have to go back two hours later. You know, I think that was God that put the you know, glasses in the pocket. But by the time he got back, dr dramatic changes. Well, the same thing goes is like you can pray for somebody, you know, in the grocery store. And by the time that they go back to their house, they might be completely healed. You don't know that. And, you know, sometimes there's progressive healings. And I like miracles because just, man, boom, you're going to get healed right now and pain gone and everything else is great. Okay, but and, and as I pray, I'm going to pray for trauma. Uh, this is a, a major key that God gave me a few years ago, and it's a key that most people are not aware of. They're actually uh, medically doing some studies on this. Uh, but people, like for example, people get prayed for with fibromyalgia. They get better, stress happens, brings up the stress on them, fibromyalgia comes back. Because the root of the trauma, the original trauma, was not dealt with. Okay? I've never known anybody that had fibromyalgia that didn't start with a traumatic event. Now, what's a traumatic event? Traumatic event could be you just move. 
move houses, change job, lose your job, lose a family member, um, you know, car accident. It's a variety of things because like, oh, I'm so excited about moving. Other people go, oh my God, we're moving. You know, I mean, everything, everybody can handle things differently. And, uh, and so we're going to deal with the trauma. Now I'm going to curse the trauma because Jesus cursed the fig tree to the very root so it had to die. So understand I'm not cussing, cursing kind of a thing. I am cursing it to the very root, cursing the disease. I believe in praying very specifically. That's why you have your prayer list. Because if I needed water, I could say, Anne, I need water. Anne would get me water. I have plenty of water. I have bottles all over the place, so we're good. But instead of saying, I need water, it being very specific to Anne, Anne heard her name, she would respond. Same thing goes with the, the diseases, that if you call them by name, they will respond to the name of Jesus. They have to succumb to the name of Jesus. Okay, I know that people can get healed in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. I know that they can. You might have 3%, maybe that way. I'm going to teach you how to get right at 100%. Okay. You know, she said, you know, Ann called her, you want to have Joan Hunter? Woo, yeah, great. You know, really, yes, okay, because if any of you, many of you have probably seen me on Sid Roth, you know, um, I've been on 11 times, he's the only one that's been on more than me, uh, which is okay, but I'll go on probably two more times this year, and, but, but I love going on that program because number one, it touches the world, but, but the thing is, if you watch that, it will inspire you, your faith to come and get healed. How many of you have seen me on Sid Roth? Or Marilyn Hick or something. Yeah, that's great. That's awesome. God bless Sid, Sid Roth. I love him. And, uh, and it's obvious he loves me or he wouldn't have me back on, right? So uh, they're waiting for me to, to uh, you know, get in contact with them as soon as I get home. Because, I, you know, it's a long story. But anyway. Um, but I just want to really encourage you that you can lay hands on the sick with results. Okay, do you have to be in, in the ministry for 45 years? No, learn from somebody who's been in the ministry for 45 years. Okay, now all of you that I, I've, you know, I've got 20 books out. You can get them all through Amazon. Uh, they're uh, e-reader through Kindle, things like that through Amazon. They're all available that way. Um, we've sold every one in New Zealand. We went to the Christian bookstores, bought them, brought them, and they're gone, So, which is a good problem. But next year, I'm going to be shipping my own books over here um, <clears throat> because um, it's not just to sell the books. It's what's in the books. You know, there are manuals. There are, you know, guides. There are all kinds of things like that. And... Um, and they can they can help you. They can help heal you in your body, your mind, your soul, your spirit, and finances. I personally have been healed in every one of those areas supernaturally. Uh, diagnosed with breast cancer 18 years ago. They gave me about two years to live. Once again, that was 18 years ago. Ha ha, hallelujah. Glory to God. But I was supernaturally healed. And part of my teaching is of what I learned through that. I'd gone through a really horrific time in my life. And, uh, and... There was no way I could survive. The doctor said, you know, you've got two years to live. You've got the breast cancer. Counselor said, you're never, ever going to get over this. You need to learn to live with this. Um, you know, broken heart syndrome, everything else that goes along with that. And, you know, and, and financial ruins. My, my accountant said, quit tithing, quit giving the offerings, plan on filing bankruptcy. I knew exactly what to do. I changed accountants. <laughs> right? Hallelujah. And I ain't broke no more. Hallelujah. And never filed bankruptcy, and I'm not ever planning on it. But the thing is, when you understand that God can take you from where you are to take you where he wants you to be. And so through that period of time, you know, I said, God, I can live without a breast, but I can't live with a broken heart. And so I went after getting my heart healed. I personally believe that when you're dealing with broken heart, broken heart syndrome, worried about your family, worried about your husband, worried about this, that that's what opens up the door for breast cancer. And when you get rid of the worry, the trauma, betrayal, abandonment, a variety of things like that, and I was dealing with getting my heart healed, I went back to, I'm making a long story short, uh, went back to the oncologist knowing I really think I better go check and see what they say to do, what they recommend. And I went and they spent two hours and they couldn't find the cancer because I was supernaturally healed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Yes, I did pray for God to, you know, do that. I called my parents. That was the extent of it. Uh, I had just gone through divorce. My ex-husband was, uh, is homosexual. And, uh, and, and we were in ministry together. We traveled. He was here with me when we were here in 76. And uh, very, very traumatic. Uh, we lost our church. We lost our home. We, we l- lost everything. And then I, in addition to that, lost my health. And how God has restored it uh, is absolutely phenomenal. So through that period of time, I learned how to heal the heart. I have a book, Healing the Heart. And then I also learned how to walk out um, different areas and how to stop being a magnet to sickness. The biggest magnet is your mouth. Well, I know there's so much bacteria in your mouth. I ain't talking about that. I'm talking about what's coming out of your mouth. I've come with an extra bottle tonight of Holy Ghost soap to clean out mouths with, you know, holy, you know, get it lined up with the word. You know, because y'all are entering into your, I, we're in for a real culture shock because tomorrow when we get home, it's going to be almost 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay. Some will go, can we go back? So <laughs> that's pretty hot. Okay. No, it's very hot with 100% humidity. Hallelujah. But it keeps your face nice and young looking. It's great with all the moisture in the air. And, uh, but, but the thing is, I want to encourage you. This is a time and a season for you to go after what it is. Now, once again, we're entering in here. You're entering into your winter. Okay. I don't, I don't know how bad it gets. I know on the other island, the South Island, that it gets a whole lot colder than here. I, I've heard all kinds of things about how cold it really gets down there. But the thing is, you can enter in this time and the season knowing this is when you always get a cold. Okay, I always get a winter cold. I always do this. It's always hard on me. Da, 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 da. When you start saying that, that is an invitation to the cold to come in. This is my first year. I am never, I am not going to get a winter cold. You start saying things like that, you're going to turn around. You're going to, you know, as you gave in the offering tonight, some of you went, well, you know, that giving, it never works. You've cursed your finances. Think about this. You know, you give an offering and say, go and grow. And see if you, if nothing ever happens to it, then you blame the pastor. Whereas it's your mouth that just condemned your offering. Well, I'll never get out of debt. All power in heaven and earth just agreed with you. I want you to understand the power of your words. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. And, and God says choose life. You know, when I was diagnosed with cancer, I'm laying on the table, and I can see cancer all on the, the sonogram over there. And I'm like this, and I'm like, you know, kind of with my hands together. I said, just put some flowers in there and bury me. That's what you think when you're diagnosed with what's known as the big C. But Christ is the big C. Okay? And when you get that corrected, it will be a whole lot better, to say the least. So understand, this is a time to see that we need to kind of tweak our mouth. That every time I give, God multiplies it back. You know what I'm saying this year? Every day I'm receiving a financial blessing. And I've been saying that. And you know what? Every day I have received a financial blessing. You know what I woke up to today? I have a business, very, a business on the side. I don't have to work. It's great. Because the business is doing so good, they're giving me a free trip to the Bahamas. Oh, hallelujah. You know, and then a $500 bonus. Oh, I know. And then yesterday, before yesterday, was, I'm putting $100 in your bank account. Okay. Oh, every day something supernatural is happening. And am I, I am confessing out of my mouth that the blessings of God are running and overtaking me, even in New Zealand. Because he knows where I am, and that financial angels know where I am. And, and you know, and I was blessed today in more ways than one. But we went to the, I think it's Zulong, Zilong, Zilong Tea. If y'all have not experienced that, go experience that. It's like, well, what is it? It's the tea factory here. And of organic teas. And go to see the movie that's within there. It was so much fun. It was, it was just like something very different. You know, but we did end up and have, you know, our own individual prayer meeting up there. Um, we pray for everybody. Yes, that's what happens. You go and you pray. 
And, uh, but the thing is, when you understand it's Jesus on the inside, Jesus comes in, he does not leave out his gifts. He doesn't leave out his mind. He doesn't leave out his anointing. People are praying for the anointing to come in. It's already in when you accept Jesus. The, all the gifts of the Spirit are already within you. Well, well, how do you get them? You develop them. You teach them. Many of you in here have had children. You know, you get this baby, and it's like, okay, grow up. No, it needs, it needs diaper changes too, but that's another story. But, you know, it needs to be fed, and then you teach it to talk. Okay, and this is the thing in, is that in Christianity, people get saved, and then 10 years later, they're wanting the gifts to come in where they're already in there, just need to be taught and instructed. Now, you being here, you know, is a time and a teaching and learning that will help you develop, and with the knowledge that you can do it. You know, he's why I mean, he, Cedric's trying to get me to go over to the guy, person's house to pray, whereas I don't need to, because Jesus paid him a house call. Only in that body instead of this one. Right? Okay. So when you understand, once again, Jesus does the healing. Jesus does the healing through you. Now, the other day, I think it was Wednesday, I did the healing rooms, right? Wednesday. We did the healing rooms. And the miracles that have happened through those people from that day is incredible. Most of them, if they've been in the meetings, they've been helping me pray at the end. And it doesn't matter if they pray or if I pray. Everybody's getting healed anyway. That's what it's about. And then they're going home, and they're praying for their relatives who physically couldn't come. And they're, then they're coming back with testimonies of that person getting healed and that person getting healed. And then, like, I think Julie prayed for somebody up in Auckland, and, and they're healed. I mean, it's just like, that's just what it's supposed to be. This is not a world about, well, let's all pray in Joan's name. No, it's in Jesus' name, because trust me, Joan won't work. <clears throat> and, uh, but when you understand that Jesus, all power and authority is in you, longing to get out of your hand. Isn't that good? And, and I, you know, I'd love to come back. I have a lot of other teaching besides healing. But to come back and have all of New Zealand healed would be awesome. Okay? And we can do all kinds of other things and just have testimony time, you know, of what God has done here. Because there's constantly more people coming in. And uh, <clears throat> so there's, there, well, unfortunately, we'll never run out of people to pray for. Just because. If nothing else, there's tourists, you know. <laughs> a lot of that. And uh, from all, all over the world. One thing that was really neat about the tea factory today is that they have employed 24 different countries of employees. That was amazing. What? A lot of them are Christian. You know, while we're doing all the praying in there, the people that were help serving and you know, that our events coordinator, I mean, she's listening and she's like, she's like just so excited. And she's from China. Okay. And, uh, but she was just like, this is like so exciting. She was just like, and that's what's so neat is that she was, she didn't want to leave and go do her work. She just wanted to listen. Yeah, it was fun. When she was just like, this is just really awesome. So um, I'm going to call out a couple um, words of knowledge and, or more than likely somebody has this here. Okay, so you can tell the difference um, to some degree, but I'm, I am having word of knowledge on the shoulder. But what I'm going to ask, if that's you, to raise your hand. Obviously, if it's your shoulder, raise this hand, okay, whichever one doesn't hurt. And, uh, and then as I point to you, I'm going to have you come on up here. There might be 30 of you with shoulder problems. Obviously, if we pray, do that, that's all we're going to do tonight is shoulders. So I'm going to do like two at a time. And, uh, and then we're just going to have people up here and uh, to pray for shoulders and knees and different things like that. Because as I do like two at a time, because, you know, even the ark, it was two, two at a time. Doesn't have to be male and female. We're okay on that one. And, uh, uh, but we'll do, we'll pray for up here because I want you to learn how I do it, but I do it with results. Now, this will kind of give you the model. Do you have to pray verbatim like I do. No. 
There are a few words. The more that you incorporate them, the greater results you're going to have, such as trauma. Then there's stress. Anybody in here not gone through trauma? Nobody's ever had stress, right? Yeah, we've all had a lot of stress. Now, in addition to that, uh, medically, they've, they've searched this out, but it's awesome to not only see it searched out, but I've been doing this, and now the medical people are actually following suit, okay? Some of you, is there anybody in here that has had an injury more than, say, 20, 25 years ago, and you still, it still hurts? Okay, why don't you come on up here, and I'll just demonstrate with her. Yes, they got that. They got it. Okay, so where do you hurt? Um, should I point out on you? Or so? Yes, right there. A little, oh, yeah. little to the left. Just a little to the left. Are you itchy? <laughs> <laughs> okay. I need, I'm looking forward to getting a massage, but I think a massage would do better after I fly home tomorrow. But seriously, okay, somewhere in this general area. Okay, which would be the sciatic nerve area. Now, how long ago did you hurt that, and what did you do? Well, 30 years ago, I crashed, I come down the snow on a piece of plastic, and the snow, the plastic turned, and I hit a rock. And with this spot coming backwards against the rock, I didn't think I could walk, but it has affected this side. My knee is very sore. Okay. The back is sore. 30 years. Okay. Now, she's probably had prayer somewhere along the way, at least if nothing else yourself. And, but what's happened is the trauma was not dealt with because it was traumatic. Number one. Number two, 30 years, it still hurts. That's called cellular memory. And when you understand the cellular memory will hang on to the pain forever. Okay, so I'm going to go back here. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, I just, careful. Step on that person. <laughs> okay, Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, I just curse the trauma from that uh, little snowing accident in Jesus' name. I command that trauma to go, all cellular memory of that trauma and that incident to go in Jesus' name. I command the hips to go back into alignment in Jesus' name. I'm not doing that. So, Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, I thank you that they're going into alignment. The pain, sometimes you'll see a person's body go to where a body can't go by themselves. It's just, and God's just putting it all in order. And Father, in the name of Jesus, I just command that pain generated from there all the way down and into the knee. I command all that pain to go. You've got some swelling in here. So I speak a brand new knee, all swelling to go in Jesus' name. Say, thank you, Jesus. I've been very sore today in my back. So. How's that feel? All the pain gone? Isn't that great? Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Isn't that good? 30 years of pain gone. Amen. Okay, your turn. Very fun sweater. Yeah. It's kind of furry. Okay, so where do you have pain? Face me this way. I don't have pain, but I have um, damage. Had a um, miraculous escape from car versus big truck. Okay. But um, sustained a brain injury. Okay. TBI, traumatic brain injury. Okay. And do you have any pain or just like loss of memory? Uh, can't really function really well? The pain is an emotional pain. But, okay. But definitely, you know, like there's brain damage. And you've had it for several years. My son was five, and he's 20, uh, 32 now, so. Okay, so good, good period of time, right? Okay, so Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, I just curse any and all form of trauma that she has had from this accident in Jesus' name. Uh, I curse the fear that came in uh, from that and has literally um, just captured her and entangled her with this fear. 
And Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, I just command every bit of that to go in Jesus' name. Hold your head up. Father, in the name of Jesus, any damage that was done to this head, to the skull, to the brain, I command all that to be released in Jesus' name. The traumatic brain injury, all damage to go in Jesus' name. You need a C-curb, so you're going to get your C-curb back. So, Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, I just speak height restored, C-curve restored, peace restored in Jesus' name. And, Father, her right mind restored in Jesus' name. Her heart restored, her life restored to normal in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Say, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. That's right. Thank you, Jesus. Isn't that good? Hallelujah. <clears throat> She'll see even greater results, you know, tomorrow. Okay. And uh, somebody in here, more than likely, has lost a lot of height, either a, a falling accident or just because of age and just some people tend to shrink a little bit. Who is that? Who, who, who knows you've lost at least two inches? Okay. Four? Okay, well, come on up. That sounds like good. Okay. I thought you were just really cute and short. Well, you're cute and short, but you want to be a little taller, so come on up. Okay, so um, so you said you've lost four inches in height. I have. How come? I parked a caravan on my head. It's not a good place to park a caravan. <laughs> parked a caravan on her head. Okay, a caravan is a big truck here. A caravan is a van. A trailer. House trailer. Okay. Everybody's got a little different terms. I just want to see the, the magnitude of what was actually on top of her. Okay. So you have um, neck problem, back problem, all kinds of problems, head problems, headaches, yeah. migraines. Yes. All of the above. <laughs> okay. All of the above. Anything else? I'm asthmatic. Okay. Um, How long have you been asthmatic? Probably since I was about six. Okay. Now, teaching, but I would do this individually with her also. Six years old, she's had asthma since six years old. More than likely, some kind of trauma in the home, somewhere between five and six years old. Yep, okay. That's why I went and got this. Okay, you're going to ring it out, but you might need some more because you just kind of stick it right there in case you need it. Okay, so we're good to go there. Okay, so some form of traumatic event triggered in that trauma in the body reacted a different way. It could react with other emotional problems. It could react with asthma. It could, you know, I, I was talking to somebody the other day. She had asthma, and then her child got asthma. And since birth, the, the child had asthma. Situation, found out what it was in her own life, took care of that. Then she had a baby, the second baby, postpartum depression, couldn't get out of the house, dealt with postpartum depression and very serious depression. And so the baby was colic, the milk was bad, da, 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 baby has had, who's now like three or four, has had asthma the whole time until the other day. Okay? And when you go back to when it started, deal with that, that's when you're going to get a whole lot more results. Okay? So we're going to deal with that. You ready? Father, right now in the name of Jesus, I just curse this trauma from when she was about six years old. I command all that trauma to go, the heartache, the guilt that came with it, a grief, shame. I command every bit of that to go in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. I command all that pain to leave her heart, to leave her body, memory to be gone in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. It's okay to let it out. You got to get rid of it. You've been carrying it for too long. And Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, I curse this asthma. I speak a new set of lungs 
in Jesus' name. <clears throat> in Jesus' name, every and all forms of shame, I command to leave these shoulders. In Jesus' name, every bit of it gone. We're off to a good start. You feel a difference, can't you? Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. And Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, this whatever, this caravan falling on her head and her body, I command the results, open your eyes, the results of all of that to go in Jesus' name. I speak her height to be restored in Jesus' name. New vertebrae, new disc, more height. You tell you're growing? I'm not getting shorter. <laughs> I put a stop to that. Father, more height. You've got some probably some fused or crushed vertebrae. So, Father, I speak new vertebrae and disc in Jesus' name. Do you realize how much taller you are than me now? We were about the same height when we started. Thank you, Jesus. More, Lord. Every bit of pain in her neck, in her back, and head, every bit of it to go in Jesus' name. Say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Now, how's your neck? It doesn't feel too bad right now. It doesn't feel too bad. <clears throat> okay, she said, doesn't feel too bad right now. No, doesn't feel too bad, period. Full stop. Full stop. <laughs> yes, okay. Amen. Thank you. thank you, Jesus. Everything good? Okay. He's measuring how tall you are next to him. <laughs> My husband and I were really blessed with you worshiping the Lord tonight. It was, it was, you were just really cute. So, but you already know that. Okay. How old are you? Uh, old enough. I just want to see if you're older than me. Yes. You don't know how old I am. So how old are you? You tell me, I'll tell you. It's a secret. <laughs> Mine is not a secret. <laughs> wow. I'm nearly 79. Nearly 79. So you're 78, almost 79. Well, in June, I'll be 65. So, wow. yeah, I know. <laughs> it's time to retire. I don't think so. How about refire? Yes. Okay. So what's wrong with your back? How come you've lost sight? I have a curvature in my back. Okay. I fell off a horse when I was a child. Okay. And uh, so as you can see, my, my, my back is like this. Okay. That's why I'm all, I'm all crunched up. Okay. So you fell off a horse when you were six, you said? When I was a child. Child. Somewhere. Somewhere in the age of six-ish. Yeah. Okay. So just a few years, more than 70 years ago that happened. Yeah. Okay. And then as a result of that, trauma. In my teenage years. Okay. Okay, so it's still over 65. Okay, so we're still, we're still good. That's a long time to deal with this trauma in his back. Okay? Oh, we had a battle over the years. You and your back? Yes. Okay, or are you and the horse? The back. The back. <laughs> I wasn't sure. Anyway, go ahead and turn this way. Face this way. Okay? Yes, here we go. Are you married? Okay. What should I say? Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> have you have have you ever? <laughs> so he's available. <clears throat> because sometimes when you go home, people that you know or your children or whatever, and they look at you and they go, "What happened to you?" As they're looking up here instead of down here. Yeah, I've got my son here and his wife. Oh, good. They'll get to Rachel, watch you. Rachel, Isn't that good? They're watching. That's good. That's good. So, Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, I just curse this trauma in this body throughout the whole life, but in particular from the fall and the damage that it did to his back. I speak health and wholeness into the digestive system. I command this rib cage to go back into alignment in Jesus' name. Keep your eyes open. Now, we'll see, kind of see where you are right here. Okay, so Father, in the name of Jesus, I curse the scoliosis. I command the scoliosis to go, height to be restored, spine to straighten up in Jesus' name. You're over my shoulder now. Pretty cool, huh? So Father, in the name of Jesus, more height, height restored in Jesus' name. 
His eyes are really getting big. <clears throat> Father, in the name of Jesus, I just command the spine to be the proper curve in Jesus' name. More height. More height. More, Lord. Yeah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Not bad, huh? You got two or three at that point. Inches. Praise the Lord. Yes. How's your back? Good. Good? Good? Isn't that amazing? Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay, you got something wrong with your hand? Yes. You've lost height? Yes. Okay. Rheumatoid arthritis. Okay. Nearly seven, eight years. Okay. I got two knee replacements. You've already had two knee replacements. Two hands replaced. Okay, two hands. You've had surgery on both your hands. And how... Okay. Okay, so how long ago did you have the surgery? Last, this month, 8th. 8th of this month. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Operations. <laughs> you have a surgery every week? I know that's a slight exaggeration. But she's an evangelist type personality, so she can. <laughs> because she's praying for me all the time. Okay. Okay, we're going to pray for him again this week because he's in the surgery again. Actually, yesterday, this time in the emergency department. Yesterday. This time. Now, what was yesterday? I'm in the emergency department in the hospital. They do all tests. Oh, emergency room yes. in the hospital. Yes, since yesterday afternoon. Why? I went to the physio. All of that, I am collapse. Complete collapse. Like, <laughs> collapse? Weak. Complete weak. And, uh, they do the blood tests and uh, x-rays and everything. Then finally, we're praying everything. At uh, 8 o'clock, they've done everything. There's nothing wrong with home. Yeah, right. But you still collapsed. Yes, but it's too, it's a, I understand that, God but at least you got back up and you're here tonight, is which is a good decision. Yes. Okay, yes. so here we go. Okay, Father, right now in the name of Jesus, I just curse this these traumas in Jesus' name that is literally playing havoc on this body in Jesus' name. It's... Um, I'm, I'm just trying to figure out what to call it. It's a, it's a harassing spirit of infirmity that is just bringing just pain and, and complications and so forth throughout this body. I curse any form of trauma in Jesus' name, any words um, that are satanic words that have been spoken over you, possibly by family members and different things like that. Those words are now cut off of you in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, I command a release of all of that and all of this rheumatoid arthritis throughout this body. I just speak these hands to function normally in Jesus' name from this day forth. Father, you did two knee replacements through surgery. So, Father, we ask you to tweak them and heal them the rest of the way. All scar tissue to go in Jesus' name. Open your eyes. I speak health and wholeness into this neck all the way down the spine. Height to be restored. Isn't that fun? See, I can't pick him up, so just so that you know that. I wouldn't if I could, but. Okay. No, I didn't see no. Now you can see over my yeah, shoulder. Is it? Good, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Isn't that good? <laughs> Say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Do you have any pain left in your body? No. Nah, it's fine. Thanks. Isn't that good? No pain. Right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> now, you you go to physio yes. and they tell you one, two, three, four. Yep. One, two, three, four. Okay. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. One, two, three, four. Four syllables. Thank you, Jesus. You will get phenomenal results, way more than going one, two, three, four. Okay? Great. And then your hands. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You'll get all your strength back and complete mobility. Okay? Thank you, Jesus. That's awesome. Okay. There you go. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, we, yeah, isn't this fun? So much fun. Okay, now I'm going to pray for a few people on this side so y'all can see instead of just seeing the person get taller than me 
from this angle. Uh, who in this section right here needs a knee replacement? Doctors have said you need one. Man, you're awfully young to get one. But come on, you might as well get it. Get it free, yeah. I don't care if you got free health insurance here or not, man. No recovery time for this one. Looks like he's got a little back problem too. A few problems. Okay. So what, what's wrong? Uh, so I've got a collapsed lung and two cracked ribs. Um, nerve damage all through my left arm. Um, How did you do that? Uh, they're not related. So separate incidents. Um, yeah, and a badly torn knee ligament. So um, one kind of, what kind of an accident? Kind throughout of the last two years. Um, outdoor sports sort of. Activities, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Kind of put a halt to that, at least for a while? Yeah. Until tomorrow? <laughs> we'll see. Okay. So you need, you need knee surgery here, whether replacement or at least a torn ligament repaired. And so you've got nerve damage because of probably something in your head or neck. Yeah, there's not, no strength in my left, left arm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, no, it's difficult to breathe. It has been for a few months. Okay. Um, so is your lung collapsed still? Um, we don't been know. in the hospital, so it's yeah, reasonably healthy. But um, so a lot of pain breathing and yeah. It's important that you breathe, especially pain-free, because see, if you breathe, a little medical thing here. If you breathe, like, because I I hurt my ribs a few weeks ago, a few months ago, and the last thing I want to do is go. Ow, ow, you know, and, but I had to, I had to force myself in the process of the healing. And because if not, if you continue to breathe shallow, it opens the door for pneumonia. So you just, we want to make sure that he gets brand new lungs, healthy, strong, full of air and all the pain gone and probably did some damage to your ribs. Is that correct? Okay. So here we go. Over here. So, Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, I just curse any and all form of trauma in this life, in this body, in Jesus' name. All trauma from the different sporting accidents and just life, I command the, all of that to go in Jesus' name. I speak health and wholeness into the entire digestive system. All of these cracked and or bruised ribs, I command all the pain to go. I speak this lung to be completely restored in Jesus' name. All pain to go, but all fear of breathing to go in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I speak a brand new knee. I curse all the trauma in there, all the torn tendons, muscles, and ligaments commanded to go back into place in Jesus' name and all inflammation to go in Jesus' name. I speak health and wholeness. Hold your head up. Okay, you need a C curve back too, probably. Did you know that? It's kind of straight instead of naturally curved. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, I just speak health and wholeness into this neck, all the way down the spine, height to be restored. Did you see that? That's pretty cool, isn't it? Because <laughs> you know I'm not doing that. <laughs> So, Father, in the name of Jesus, I speak a new C-curve, the C-curve restored in Jesus' name. All the vertebrae to go back into alignment. You're still growing. You've always wanted to be 6'8". <laughs> Probably won't get quite that tall. So, <laughs> not going to doubt it, but, you know. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, complete healing. Pinched nerve to be released. All pain, all weakness, numbness to go especially in the left side, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Now check your neck. That was a deep breath. It's, it's a, lot, a lot easier. Yeah, More take another one. And then exhale saying, thank you, Jesus. Thank, thank you, Jesus. Jesus. Do it again. Thank you, Jesus. Doesn't that feel good? Yeah. That's awesome. That's good. No pain. Oh, that's a lot better, 
yeah, yeah. How's your knee? Good? Usually a lot better. Yeah. Okay, knee good, lung good, ribs good, neck good. Any tingling left? Got your feeling back? No tingling, no pins and needles. <laughs> no pins and needles? No, no numbness? No nothing? Feels, feels good. Isn't that good? Mm -hmm. ah. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for coming up here, even though he pushed you, and I know that. <laughs> but he's a good guy. Hallelujah. Isn't that fun? Wow, wow. <laughs> he's having a hard time really comprehending what happened to him. But I understand that. Okay, some, anybody in this section right here need a knee replacement? You need a knee replacement? You didn't even mention that today. You had all kinds of other stuff healed. Now I'm going to abuse her, not use somebody else. Lady in the, in the blue sweater. <clears throat> okay, so how long have you had a problem with your knee? I don't know, 15 years. Okay. Yeah. Do you know if you heard it anything any any way in particular? Or? No, it's been. I, I would say when I was very young, I fell down a whole lot of steps. Okay. Yeah, and everybody just stepped aside and let me go, and I was little. I wasn't big, and I think that's when I did a lot of and damage. And that hurt you. Yeah. I mean, not phys not just physically, but it hurt you. Yes, definitely. Okay. So here we go. So, Father, right now in the name of Jesus, I just curse the trauma from that event in Jesus' name because that is potentially lingering uh, in the other parts of your body. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, I just speak all of that trauma gone out of her body from the stairs in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And this knee, that knee. We almost got... A left one also. Most probably does. <laughs> so, Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, I just speak a supernatural knee replacement. Yeah. Right now, in Jesus' name, yeah. every bit of pain to go and arthritis to go in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. You're a whole new woman. Well, I can do the Highland Fling now. I don't know what that is, but it sounds good to me. <laughs> if you're excited about it. Scottish. Awesome. Yes. Hallelujah. Okay, so what's wrong with your knee? My neck? No, my knees. Oh, oh sorry. Well, they, they actually got bone on bone, although I haven't got pain, but um, maybe heading toward it, but I actually do have a bad back. So okay. maybe. Bad back and a couple of bad knees. Okay, you probably lost height. Yes, possibly. Okay. Horse falls and things when I was younger. Okay. Yeah. So, Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, I just curse any and all form of trauma in this life, in this body. In Jesus' name, I command every bit of it to go. <clears throat> in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And, Father, open your eyes. I speak health and wholeness into this neck, all the way down the spine. Height to be restored. New vertebrae and discs, in particular in the lower back. All pain to go. In Jesus' name. And Father, I thank you for a supernatural double knee replacement. Lots of cartilage. All I know you didn't have any pain, but any grinding, command all that to go. Any form of arthritis to go. Mobility to be completely restored in Jesus' name. Say so thank you, Jesus. <laughs> thank you. And how's your back? Yeah, good, thank you. Good back. Yeah. Good knees. <laughs> Hallelujah. Isn't that good? I'm going to warn you, it's active again. Yeah. <laughs> yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Okay, anybody over here need a knee or two? Okay, all the way back. Come on. And then you right there. Come on up. Now, in, in somewhere bef before too long, I don't know exactly when, 
um, that if you, uh, you know, we're going to be praying at the end, and then the little white slips that you have, you know, we'll you can come on up here, and then you come on over here, and um, and then in the in the praying of those, you know, if you have already had prayer, then like leave them over there in the corner, leave them on your chair. We, I take them home to Texas, and we pray over them for the next month. Okay, so so you need one or two knees. Two. Two. Okay. Um, and how's your back? Um. Well, it's probably because I'm not very good because I don't walk very straight. Okay. Yeah. So you have got, pain in your back? Um, no, no. Okay. But pain in my knees. Pain in your both your knees. Okay. <laughs> Beware of the leg. It's just <laughs> she's so excited she can use it again. <laughs> Does do you need a tweak also? Just he's good. You're good. That's awesome. Yeah. She's she's getting gooder. I mean yeah, the last few hours has been totally different for her. Isn't that great? <laughs> Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, I just curse any and all form of trauma in this life, in this body, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Any form of heartache, I command all that to go in Jesus' name. Betrayal and abandonment and rejection. I command every bit of that to go in Jesus' name. Every bit of it to go in Jesus' name. I speak health and wholeness into this neck all the way down the spine. Height to be restored. All pain in her back to go. Any form of shame, I command the shame to be off your shoulders. In Jesus' name. Do you have any particular pain directly in your back? I'm going to get you a tissue. No, not really. Okay. And, uh, okay, so here we go for the knees. So, Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, I just curse the trauma on the knees. In Jesus' name, all the pain is commanded to go, trauma to go, supernatural double knee replacement. New tendons, muscles, and ligaments in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Say thank you, Jesus. Oh, oh wow. Okay. Isn't that awesome? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. In your heart. Amen. Hallelujah. Okay. So what is wrong with your knee or knees? Um, I have osteoarthritis. I have floating bone chips and behind the kneecaps, the, um, my tendons. I mean, the muscles, I get inflammation. And it's both my nana and my mum had to have knee replacements too. So well, I yours just comes it. free yeah. with no pain. It's great. Yeah. Okay. How's I've been getting lower back pain yeah. as well because um, I went and just had my feet checked rec last week. And because of my knees not working well and not supporting me, my feet are leaning in and my tendons all in my feet are really sore. And so, yeah. <laughs> so you pretty much need just an overhaul. I do. Yes, no problem. I'm sick of the pain. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. Now, let me, let me just make a comment here. She's sick of the pain. This is good. Okay, and the reason I'm saying that is because at the hotel we were at, the restaurant, they were they were discussing, the, the non-Christians were discussing right there. They're going, you know, I'm, I'm just going to have to live with this hell. I'm going to have to, I, I have to learn to live with this. And that is so common for people. And the doctors will say, you just need to learn to live with this. Right, okay. No, I, learn, to, learn to be millionaires. Okay. And I'm going to just kind of throw this in. This one's free. And uh, when I was in um, uh, Brisbane, there was some people there that had just been with Pastor Paul Young Yi Cho in Korea. And he was talking about his church. It was a very closed meeting, very limited people that were there. And he's in this meeting, and he's telling everybody in his congregation, which he has, you know, 130,000 or something unbelievable like that. And there's, of course, several different locations that he has what's called a million-dollar club. 
Now, in my opinion, I hear this, and it's people in the church that make a million dollars. That's not what it is. It's people that give over a million dollars a year to the church. Many of us in here, including myself, can't even imagine what it would be like to make a million dollars in a year. But that encouraged me so much to go beyond my wildest dreams of being able to give, give a million dollars. Now, he has thousands of members in that group. Bring it on, man. Okay. God doesn't love the people in Korea any more than he loves the people in New Zealand. They have gotten the key that God wants them wealthy. It's also scripture. Okay. And the, the point is, we've got to get beyond. We learn to live with lack. Get stinking tired of living with lack. Because lack and debt is not of God. Okay, and you might as well hear this from somebody who's been there, done that, been healed, body, mind, soul, spirit, and finances. And I tell you what, God wants you rich. He wants you out of debt. He wants you to be able to ravishly, just so much crazy, awesome, wonderful, given to every good work. Just to be able to just bless every, every ministry that comes through here, bless this church. And, and just do all incredible things for God. And it only, the only difference is money. Okay? But I, I tell you what, man, I got so excited about that million-dollar club. It's in, now, how many of you in here can really, you don't have to raise your hand, can really comprehend what I'm talking about? I mean, I, can, I hear it, but to be able to give a million dollars? If you give a million you got a whole lot left over. Okay? So just, I want you to start thinking that God wants you healed and whole, blessed and living in abundance in every area of your life. Every area. Amen? Um, I think, I think I need, I need to figure out what I did with it. But I think they're in, nope, they're over there somewhere. Um, but I have a, tea, I have a, a scripture on uh, promises of abundance because God promises to abund for abundance. Every area, not just money. And it's me reading scriptures on abundance. Julia Meyer is playing Soki music. I have probably about 10 of those left. I brought like 100. So, um, <clears throat> but that's back there. Get the word on the inside of you that God wants you blessed. Amen? So you're ready to get your back healed and your knees healed? Yes. How are they feeling now? I'm a bit shaky. Yeah, it comes from her and creaking. Okay. <laughs> Wobbly knees. Okay, so here we go. Father, right now in the name of Jesus, I just curse any kind of trauma in this life and this body in Jesus' name. I command every bit of it to go in Jesus' name. I curse any form of fear, fear of this getting worse and crippling. In Jesus' name, I command every bit of that to go. I speak health and wholeness into this neck, all the way down the spine. Height to be restored. You're growing a lot. Thank you, Jesus. New vertebrae and disc, all that pain in the lower back to go. And two brand new knees in Jesus' name, free of arthritis, free of pain, free of any torn tendons, muscles, and ligaments, and bone chips to go in Jesus' name. Two brand new knees. Oh, and not to mention healed and whole feet as a result, too. Say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, tight but no pain, correct? Okay, okay, because with tight, tightness, she hasn't done that, even that little bit. Okay, 10 years, just that little bit, she hasn't done that. So what I want you to do five more times, go, thank you, Jesus. Do it again. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. How's it going? Thank you, Jesus. 
Isn't that good? <laughs> Woohoo! Holy Ghost Physio works. Isn't that awesome? Now keep that up when you go home. Yep. Okay? Yep. And like she's over here kicking her foot. It's thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yep. Hallelujah. Tomorrow morning will be, I'm going to jump out of my bed instead yes. of getting out crippled because yes. I get out going. Yes. I You're going to act more your age. I am. Yes. I'm going to be 20 again. Yes. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yes. Now, some of you, I, I believe, are starting to think, I can do that. Yeah. It's like a new knee, in Jesus' name. How hard is that? But it can't be that easy. Who says? Man in theology says hard. Word, easy. Okay, so what's wrong with your knees? Or elsewhere. <laughs> they got old before their time. I have um, <laughs> flat feet and scoliosis. And um, my left foot rolls in. And um, gymnastics and dancing injuries have... Affected the knees and lower back. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. So she's a dancer. Or was and needs to be again. Yes. Okay. For sure. For sure. So, Father, right now in the name of Jesus, I just curse any kind of trauma, trauma from the gymnastics and, and different things as a child, all the trauma to her body, how it's affected this body in Jesus' name. I curse any form of scoliosis. I command the spine to take on the proper curve in Jesus' name. Get everything back into alignment. Height to be restored. All pain in the back to go. Thank you, Jesus. Hey. Especially in the lower back. In Jesus' name, I speak a supernatural double knee replacement, all pain gone, all arthritis gone, all trauma gone, and cellular memory of the gymnastics and so forth and so on. Say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Go like this. Thank you, Jesus. I'm fine. It's fine. The back's good, too. The back's good, too. Isn't that good? Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can somebody take the clock off the wall and break it? No, just kidding. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, um, anybody here with fibromyalgia? We've got several people that have gotten rid of fibromyalgia. Anybody over here? Okay, you come on up. And then we have a lady back there. Well, you're going to learn how to pray for your granddaughter and get her totally healed, whether you see her or not, or you can call her on the phone, or unless she's here. That one. There was a lady that sent an email in that got lost on Sunday. Is she here? I sent her the address. So I make sure I told her I would do something for her when she got here. Okay, fibromyalgia, fibromyalgia, fibromyalgia. Okay, every, every time, once again, every time fibromyalgia is always brought on by a traumatic event. I'm going to ask you just a few questions. And how long have you had fibromyalgia? 2011. Okay, since 2011. Okay, and anything happened traumatic 2010, 2011? Um, I suffered with depression quite bad okay but depression was brought on because of something traumatic yeah I don't we don't need to know what it is but you know you know what you're ta what I'm talking about just heaps of stuff that happened in my life that was traumatic okay heaps of stuff <laughs> that piled up and the heap just kind of crashed in okay and fibromyalgia a lot of people are not even aware of really what fibromyalgia is I've discovered that it's not real common over here trust me it's not real common even though there's three in in this meeting and uh, trauma happens, it produces stress. Stress goes in the neck, down, you know, in the shoulders, down the spine, ends up in the bottom. When you have pain in the bottom, you go to the doctor and say, my bottom hurts so bad. Doctor says fibromyalgia. And it just kind of settles down there. And, um, and there is no cure known to man. They can give you medication so you don't care that you hurt. Okay, correct? It also has chronic fatigue syndrome, which means you haven't slept much. Don't go this way a little bit, please. Uh, that you haven't slept much, and you roll over at night, and it hurts. So you roll over, uh, and you wake up night after night like that. 
as in comparison to a slow wake up. Okay, pretty much sums it up? Yep. Okay, here we go. Ready to say, say bye-bye fibromyalgia. Bye-bye fibromyalgia. <laughs> Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, I just curse these traumas, the heaps of traumas as she described it. I command all those heaps of trauma to leave this body in Jesus' name. The effect that it's had on this body, especially the heart, betrayal, abandonment, rejection, Abuse, mental, verbal, emotional, physical, or sexual. I command all those traumas to go and to be completely released out of this body. I speak health and wholeness into the entire digestive system. I curse the spirit of fibromyalgia, spirit of pain in Jesus' name, and chronic fatigue syndrome. And I command every single stress ball throughout this body to be completely relaxed and released in Jesus' name. I speak health and wholeness into this neck all the way down, height to be restored, a new lease on life in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Woohoo! Oh, she doesn't do that to me. What? Heal you in the name of Jesus? I have nothing to do with the other stuff. People just get overloaded and they go. Okay, so rare is the man that has fibromyalgia. What it says about a man is that you're probably very, very, a very sensitive man. I don't know what it's called, but I just have symptoms that are very similar. So I just have uh, constant aching muscles, okay. uh, mostly lower. Yeah. Mostly what? Uh, mostly lower part of the body. Okay, so and it's mainly like in the muscles, kind of the flesh. Uh, just, just yeah, the muscles are constantly aching. Yeah. Okay, so Father, right now in the name of Jesus, I just curse this trauma in Jesus' name. I command it to be gone. I speak health and wholeness into this body in Jesus' name. I command all these any form of fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue syndrome, pain, stress balls. Uh, I command every bit of it to leave this body, especially. Lower half in Jesus' name. Say, thank you, Jesus. Now check your body. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> Good. Awesome. <laughs> Praise God. Okay. Y'all, all of you have fibromyalgia? Okay, you have fibromyalgia too? And you do. Okay, you come on up here. Okay. Whoops. Got to get my... Little readers here. Okay. That's what I thought you said. Okay, now she's had blood transfusions and abuse. Anybody in here never have abuse? Okay, I just want to make her not feel uncomfortable by using that word because we've all been uh, abused. Um, she's had a broken wrist. Um, she's got arthritis in her hips. She's got PTSD. Most time PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder, is brought on because of domestic violence, child abuse, things like that. And of course, fibromyalgia, uh, chronic fatigue syndrome. She also has epilepsy. Now I'm gonna pray for the epilepsy, but in addition to the epilepsy uh, in the prayers, I'm going to curse every prion, P-R-I-O-N or P-R-I-O-N-S. And prions are bad cells eating good cells. The only cell known to man without a nucleus. Okay, and so they don't know where they come from or how to get rid of them. They're just there. They say every body actually has some. I don't because I take care of it on a daily basis because I believe, I personally believe this is not medically or scientifically proven that we can get prions from our food. We can get human DNA from our food. It's called GMO, genetic. Yeah, yeah. Whose genetics are we getting? We don't know. Okay. And so when you understand that, that all these, these, our foods and prions and just junk and DNA from our food. You know, you may not have had a blood transfusion, which she has, but if you haven't had a blood transfusion, you know, you have in your food. And I hope that kind of grosses you out. 
a little, but the point is, is you need to study your food and you need to say grace over it. And if there's anything ungodly in it, take it out in Jesus' name. We just need to say instead of God is great, God is good. No, man, we need to get after it and get rid of the junk in our food. Amen? Amen. A little extra preach there. And she thinks she's had fibromyalgia for about 50 years, even though she looks 25. I had to ask her twice on that one. <clears throat> Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, I just curse this trauma, traumas since conception that is in her DNA and in her life and in her body that has just made its home there. So, Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, I just curse any and all form of trauma in this life, in this body, in Jesus' name. I curse fibromyalgia, spirit of pain, chronic fatigue syndrome. I command every bit of it to go. and put my hand on your head. I curse the epilepsy in Jesus' name. All prions, scar tissue, I command every bit of it to go in Jesus' name. The trauma that brought on the asthma, I command every bit of that to go in Jesus' name. I speak new lungs in Jesus' name. No more asthma. I speak health and wholeness into this neck. You need a C curve too. Into this neck, all the way down the spine. I command all the blood vessels to be released, allowing the blood to flow through. <clears throat> Any spirit of migraine, I command it to go. Inclination to migraines, I command that to be gone in Jesus' name. I curse any and all form of arthritis throughout this body, especially in the hips, in Jesus' name. I command every single stress ball and spirit of pain to leave this body. Which, which wrist? That was broken. Okay, so Father, I speak health and wholeness into that wrist, all pain to go, mobility to be restored in Jesus' name. We remove the label of PTSD, all the trauma of all the childhood memories and any form of abuse. I command all of that to go in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, and I'm a legion of prayer. And if you have had, personally ever had a blood transfusion, it really hurt, wouldn't hurt if we all said it because, because of food, okay? And just say, Father, Father I, repent I repent for my sins, for my sins. and the sins, the sins of my fathers and the sins of whose blood, sins of blood. or DNA I have received. Take the sin from us, put it on the cross. <laughs> never to be held against us again. Any generational curse that has come in, it, take it from me now in Jesus' name. They're getting blessed behind you, which is good. Say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Do you have any pain left? No, just tingling. Just tingling. And you see her smile? Isn't that awesome? That's awesome. Okay. He got a little teary-eyed watching her get healed. That's, so, that's awesome. Okay. I mean, because he's prayed. How long have you prayed for her to get healed? Her husband. Five years. Okay. And you got to see it manifest. Is that like the coolest and see, God, has, he heard your prayer. God, do something to get her healed. And he brought me all the way to New Zealand to answer your prayer. Isn't that great? Amen. And then like, you know, you've, the, the lady here has the granddaughter. Curse the trauma because it's always brought on by trauma. And, and then, you know, if she's free to tell you or if you know what it is, the, the effect of that trauma to leave her body, the spirit of fibromyalgia, spirit of pain, chronic fatigue syndrome, stress balls, command it all to go in Jesus' name. It doesn't have to be any harder than that. And, how, and you've had, she's had fibromyalgia roughly for 50 years. No more. No more. No more, no more. Okay. 
So how long have you had fibromyalgia? A few years. A few years? Something traumatic happened a year or so before that? Uh, all start with the working. Yeah. And then Can be traumatic when young men start working, right? <laughs> And yeah, well, during the work and then carry a heavy stuff. Okay. And then after that is just yeah. I know in this couple, in this few years, it's every 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 day, every evening, it's like wake up just because of muscle pain. And okay, then, is it muscle pain or fibromyalgia? I don't, don't know. know. Yeah, so we're yeah, gonna pray. I, I, I check a dictionary, sort of like it. <laughs> Just got pain all over your body. And then, yeah, and yeah, and then plus, then yeah, just very often, like the whole, like the back is just very stressed, like a muscle, and then yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, no idea. Yeah. Because fibromyalgia is usually brought on because of, of, of an emotional trauma. Okay, not working. I was kidding him about the work part. Work, you can, you're not, you might not be used to lifting all that, and you can hurt your back, okay? So, Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, I just curse any and all form of trauma in his life, in his body, and how he has used and abused his body. In Jesus' name, I command health and wholeness, restoration into this body, height restored. In Jesus' name, all pain to go, all muscle ache to go, height restored. You got some more height in there. In Jesus' name. Woo, there you go. And all that back pain to go, cellular memory of the pain to go in Jesus' name. Say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Are you guys having fun back there? Oh, yeah. One might stay. Okay, so how long have you had fibromyalgia? Around 10 years. And you know what I'm talking about, 10, 11 years ago? Okay, something traumatic happened. Okay, and uh, so we're going to deal with the trauma. And when you're praying for somebody, there's two ways you can say, let's just deal with the trauma. Tell me all about it. (laughs) That's sick. They don't need to tell you, you don't need to hear it. Okay, spirit of trauma that came in. And that's all we need to know. Sometimes, you know, God will reveal it to me, um, what it is. And, uh, but we don't need to delve into it. Okay. And we don't need to bring it back up. Living with it, living through it is enough. Okay. We don't have to relive it. Okay. Ready? Say bye-bye fibromyalgia. After a lot of emotional trauma, I um, had a really bad injury as well. And I shattered both leg bones in my lower left leg, it's all plated back together, and I had about an eight month recovery, and while I was on crutches and that, my left shoulder got all frozen up, and there's a big kind of knot under that shoulder blade that, um, it's kind of, I don't know, it it just, I can barely move it, I can't lift it, wow. How high can you lift it? It hurts if I go too straight, (coughs) or if... Okay, and so um, fibromyalgia here, and then you hurt your leg and then injured your shoulder because of the crutches and stuff. Okay, good to go. You ready? Then you get to go, wow! Isn't that good? So, Father, right now in the name of Jesus, I just curse any and all form of trauma in this life and in this body in Jesus' name. I command all the trauma, um, some kind of rejection and betrayal, I command all that heaviness on this heart to go any form of grief. I command that to be gone also in Jesus' name. I curse the spirit of fibromyalgia, spirit of pain in Jesus' name, chronic fatigue syndrome. I command every bit of that to go in Jesus' name. All the trauma to the shoulder, I command it to be gone. I command the ribs to go into alignment in Jesus' name. All pain in the shoulder, all uh, lump in the back, command that to be released in Jesus' name. 
complete mobility to be restored and every bit of pain and inflammation to go in Jesus' name. And I command all of the pain down this leg, all the trauma from the broken bones. I command all the trauma to go, pain to go, cellular memory to go. And Father, just give her a brand new bone and get rid of the plates in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Say thank you, Jesus. Feel good, yeah. I felt the whole shoulder just relax, wow. and release, you, and no more fibromyalgia. Yeah, that Isn't that cool? Yeah. Yeah, you're gonna you're gonna sleep through the night. So if any of you have that got healed of fibromyalgia, be sure to set your alarm because normally you would not sleep. Isn't that great? Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Okay, any fibromyalgia. Okay, all of a sudden they're coming up okay okay chronic fatigue and fibromyalgia but more chronic fatigue right and just like total complete exhaustion and you know you you attempt to sleep but you can't sleep thoroughly and you get up and you're exhausted it's just uh, okay you ready yeah, uh, right so, Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, I just curse any and all form of trauma in this life, in this body, in Jesus' name. I curse the spirit of fibromyalgia and chronic fatigue syndrome, any kind of pain throughout this body. I command it to be gone. I speak health and wholeness. Um, I speak two new adrenal glands in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And every bit of, of chronic fatigue to go, every bit of pain to go in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Good. Woo! You get to garden a whole bunch tomorrow, too. Or vacuum and clean and things like that that you haven't done. Now, this is only for fibromyalgia, correct? Okay. Well, let me let, uh, I'm trying to stick in the vein of trying to actually get a variety, but it turns out that a lot more people had chronic had, uh, fibromyalgia. Then, okay, you come on up here. So you have fibromyalgia. Okay. And how long have you had it? Yeah, it would be over 20, 30 years. 20 to 30 years. Okay, so you know what we're talking about. Something traumatic happened 21, 31 years ago, somewhere there in that time. Yeah. Correct? Okay. Like one thing after the other. One thing after the other. And it builds up and builds up and builds up. So, Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, I just curse any and all form of trauma in this life, in this body. In Jesus' name, I curse the spirit of, of fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue syndrome. I command all that to go, every bit of spirit of pain to go in Jesus' name. All muscles to be relaxed in this body, in Jesus' name. Health and wholeness into this neck, all the way down the spine. Height to be restored. Energy to be restored in Jesus' name. Say, thank you, Jesus. Now, check it. A little bit sore, but <laughs> any any pain? I felt something go across here when you were praying for me. So mm -hmm. she felt something go from here. Yeah, yeah. That's the trauma. Yeah. Isn't that great? Yeah. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Okay, yes, sir. Somebody in here has had like a broken ankle. Anybody have like a broken ankle? Okay, come on up. Okay, so um, you just have a lot of pain throughout your body. Yes, particularly in my neck. Okay. So, Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, I just curse any and all form of trauma in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Father, any form of abuse that he's experienced through the years, I command every bit of that to be released in Jesus' name. I speak health and wholeness into this neck, all the way down the spine, height to be restored, all pain in the neck to go, height to be restored, all pain down the back, to go in Jesus' name, complete mobility to be restored. Say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Um, say thank you, Jesus. thank you, Jesus. How's that feeling? Well, thank you, Lord. Look up. Look down. I couldn't look up before. He couldn't look up before, and now he can. I, I, I can look up, but it's jams. Uh huh. Turn around jams. He turns it jams. It's not jamming anymore. That's awesome. Thank you, Jesus. 
Okay, Father, in the name of Jesus, I, with the trauma gone, that will leave automatically. But Father, in the name of Jesus, I curse this chronic fatigue syndrome in Jesus' name. I curse any and all forms of oppression and depression and hopelessness in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Yes. So on the streets tomorrow, everybody's going to be going, because all the chronic fatigue left. Okay, yes, ma'am. So what's wrong with your ankle? I had low blood pressure and I went over the top and I've got a compound fracture and nuts and bolts and plates and they're staying there forever because my bones aren't strong. They're staying there forever? No. I'm not suggesting surgery to remove them, but if God removes them tonight, we'll let him. Okay, so you need circulation, heart problems, uh, lungs. Um, right. Okay, her brother died about 19 years ago, brought on the trauma, grief. Then as a result of that, she got the asthma. Okay. Okay, here we go. Father, right now in the name of Jesus, I just curse this trauma in Jesus' name. I curse any form of grief. Command that to go. The trauma that brought on and opened the door for asthma is now cursed. The asthma is cursed. New lungs are being spoken in. In Jesus' name, I speak health and wholeness into the entire digestive system. In Jesus' name, I speak a new heart. In Jesus' name, circulation be restored to normal. In Jesus' name, I speak health and wholeness into this neck all the way down the spine. Height to be restored. In Jesus' name. And Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, I speak a brand new ankle in Jesus' name, free of nuts, bolts, and plates, and screws, and whatever. In Jesus' name, all brand new bone, completely normal, completely mobile, and all pain, cellular memory of the pain to go in. And the right knee also. Might as well get a new knee while I'm down here, right? So in Jesus' name, a supernatural knee replacement. Thank you, Jesus. It was because I didn't walk properly. Mm -hmm. And that you walked and used your knee wrong. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. So say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And then how's your foot? Oh, I couldn't do that. Ooh. <laughs> It's got more freedom. Isn't that good? Yeah. Any pain? No. Isn't that good? Yes. It's awesome. Amen. Amen. The other day when I was in Brisbane, uh, this this uh, lady came up. She and, and her uh, boyfriend came up, and she had had two discs removed out of her neck 11 days previous. They put some plates in her neck. Real pretty lady. She's probably like 40 years old. Way too young. Anybody's too young to have plates put in their neck and stuff. And then she also had two that had naturally fused because of just wear and tear. So I prayed. She grew like about three inches, uh, commanded the plate to go, new vertebrae, et cetera. And she or her boyfriend could not find the plate that was protruding. Wow. That was like so exciting. And she got complete movement and pain left. And, and uh, it, was, it was great. So now, now just think about this. Now, the other day I was praying for... Um, the worship leader at the Women of Courage, Deanne. And I was, I put my hands around her neck and she had like one vertebrae that was sticking out like this. And I'm not a chiropractor, but I can tell when that vertebrae is not supposed to do that, it's supposed to go back in, you know? And at first, you know, first thought you kind of go, ooh. And second thought, you just, you know, in the name of Jesus, you command it to go in. Now, what's so awesome is that putting my hands around her neck, I could feel it. She knew that it was out of alignment, caused her so she couldn't even turn her head very well. Or if she attempted to, it was very, very painful. So I commanded it and it just went right in. Now, that's like really awesome. Yay for her healing. But you know what? Nobody will ever take that away from me out of my hands. That's cool cellular memory. And I want you to experience these things, praying for somebody. They have a plate in their back, in their neck area, and it's gone. The lady who has the, the ankle problem, all of a sudden her ankle is moving because you prayed. Frozen shoulder. No more because you prayed. 
That's exciting. I mean, I love what I do, and I get really excited. And we were talking about it, you know, like she, we have different reactions. Like after a service like this, I'm like, "Woo!" And it's like, okay, I need to sleep. I need to sleep. I need to sleep. Woo! Look what Jesus did. Woo! Sleep, 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 please. But sometimes it's just really hard to sleep because, I mean, I don't know how many. We've had at least five or seven healed of fibromyalgia tonight. That's a life of hell that they just got out of. They can go back to work if they want to. They can do gardening if they want to. They can cook and clean. Well, that's the downside of healing. But But you can if you want to. It's not that you can't anymore because you physically can't. Okay? And, uh, okay, so what do you have? So I'm still dealing with the fibromyalgia. Because the other stuff we're going to pray for in just a few minutes. Uh, just go to um, sore hip. Go to sore hip. And left ankle. Okay, sore hip, left ankle. Okay, walking like an old man. Yes. Yeah, we got to get rid of that too, right? Okay. And uh, been through some trauma in your life? Quite a bit, yeah. Because if you're breathing, you've probably been through a lot. <laughs> Which I think is, yeah, everybody in here. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, I just curse any and all form of trauma in this life, in this body. In Jesus' name, I command every bit of it to go in Jesus' name. What I'm sensing is that through your life, especially when you were younger, um, there were some things um, not real complimentary spoken over you that you weren't going to accomplish anything. And, uh, and so it's made it a real struggle for you to really accomplish things and even finish things. Okay. And so in the name of Jesus, those words that have been spoken over him that he can't, those are now removed. And father, I thank you that he's going to see the finish line and finish and not only finish, but finish well in Jesus name, in Jesus name. Uh, you've even been told don't even start because you'll never do it right. So, Father, I thank you that right is now right in his life in Jesus' name. And I command a new hip, all pain in that area to go, inflammation to go in Jesus' name. And you said ankle over here, right? Okay. So, Father, right now in the name of Jesus, I just speak a brand new ankle in Jesus' name. Every bit of pain and inflammation, soreness to go in Jesus' name. Say, thank you, Jesus. Do a little wiggle. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So now he can dance. Isn't that great? The Lord wants you to see in the spirit. I hear that several times. How many of you think you can do this now? How many of you think you can do this now? Isn't that awesome? See, I'm just, I'm spreading this fun around New Zealand, you know, and, and to see like your neighbor healed, that's like really awesome to see your friend, to see your grandchild healed. Isn't that awesome? That's just like, wow, this is, I just, this is really cool. Okay. And, um, is there anybody in here with cancer? Okay. Come on up. Okay. Wow, that's a lot of people with cancer. Well, what I'm going to do is, I can't pray for everybody right now with cancer, but we will, I'll put the microphone down just a little bit and then we'll continue praying. Um, Because this is, this. I I want to take time with each one and then boom, it will be, you know, after 10 o'clock once I do. And so I'm going to pray for you. The rest of you, if you want to just kind of have a a seat down here, you can sit a couple of chairs there. And just leave that there. And then you have a seat here, and then we'll pray for you first as soon as we dismiss. And then you have cancer. I want to pray for you because you've been standing for quite a while. Now, I want, once again, I'm going to curse prions. Prions, bad cells, eating good cells. That can be MS. It can be cancer. It can be different things along that line. And uh, so cancer definitely has prions. 
Okay. And, um, and so I want you, you know, the word says, watch and pray. You watch, I pray. Yeah. Right now. And then as I pray, I am, yeah, okay. I am, I'm going to pray for her, but I want you listening because besides those people here in the room that have cancer, do you know somebody with cancer? Wouldn't you love to see them healed? It would be awesome. Okay. And then they get the doctor's report and you come give a report back to the pastor here, you know, or to Ann King, you know, let them know. That Jesus is healing through you, not just me, but through you. Because I'm not here to pray for everybody in New Zealand. I have left a few for you guys to pray for. <laughs> a few million, actually. But the point is, is there's, I mean, even in a mile from here, all a mile radius, there are hundreds of thousands of people that need to know Jesus, and they need to know that he still heals today. Amen? Okay, so I'll take this now. Okay, now she broke her ankle. Which one? The, her left leg her bro broke her left ankle. And as a result of that, it opened the door for chronic leukemia, ner nerve damage, back problems, um, a variety of things. She has like a whole list here. Okay. Oh, and then she has floaters in her eyes. Anybody in, have floaters in your eyes? Like you look up to the white wall and it's, and it's got little black dots. Who, who has it? Okay. You want to get rid of them? Okay. It is brought on because of stress. It can be physical stress like lifting. Okay. Or emotional stress. Stress, which brings on the high blood pressure. Yeah. All the, all the same. Put your hands over your eyes. And, and we're going to just do the working of miracles right now. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, I curse all these floaters in Jesus' name. Whatever stress brought it on, I command it to be gone in Jesus' name. And I command every one of these irritating floaters to go in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Say, thank you, Jesus. Now find a nice white wall, which there are a few around here. Raise your hand when you can tell that they're gone. Yeah, hers are gone. Isn't that great? Every once in a blue moon, maybe like once a year, I may get one. And I'll go, oh, excuse me, you are trespassing. Get out. Gone. We have the authority. Now, I'm just going to minorly divert right here. In the area of hormones, M, uh, uh, men's, uh, I'll get it. Menopause, that's the word I'm looking for. Menopause is not of God. Okay? Now, the, the, sensa the you know, cessation of your cycle, yes, that's of God. Hallelujah. But this of menopause and wow of menopause is not of God. Okay? And, you know, uh, about 10, 10, 15 years ago, the doctor says, get ready for menopause. How does a woman prepare for menopause? You definitely prepare your husband, but other than that. <clears throat> and so at that point, I said, <clears throat> you know, I walked, I did not rebuke the doctor. I walked out and I said, I cut those words off in Jesus' name. I'm going to skip menopause. Now, I will be 65 in June, about two and a half weeks. I have skipped menopause. I have no menopausal symptoms, no hot flashes, no night sweats, none of that kind of stuff, no emotional swing of the hormones, etc. And we have the power over our hormones. Now, I will tell you this. My hormones are actually perfect. I get my hormones tested at least once a year along with my blood work. Get it all done. And my hormones are perfect. Physically impossible. But God. Okay. I lay my hands where the ovaries used to be. In the name of Jesus, I just command my, my hormones to be in perfect harmony and balance in Jesus' name. I have enough estrogen, plenty of estrogen in my body. That's impossible. Well, that's because you're taking hormonal supplements. No, I'm not. Just these. This is so funny. We were in the grocery store the other day, and uh, I wanted to get a couple of whatever you call that stuff that tastes interesting. 
um, that's made here in New Zealand. Well, no, that's Australian. It's the one, yeah, that one. So I got some just to take home, just to let share my experiences here. <laughs> And, and it, was, it was really kind of cute because the, the guy that was taking us, who will remain anonymous, we are walking by this, this display, and it had Advil, it had cold stuff, it had this, it had, you know, like 20 different things to help with sickness and pain, etc. He says, do you need any of this? I said, no, I have this. He looked at me and goes, I forgot. <laughs> it, was, it was cute. Okay, so here we go. You getting rid of all this stuff? All this? Isn't that good? Okay. Sounds good to me. So just relax. Yeah. I know it's kind of hard to relax, but that's kind of what's gotten you in this position. So, Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, I just curse this trauma in Jesus' name, and I command all the trauma to leave this body. Heartache, heartbreak, grief abandonment, shame. I command every bit of it to go in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I speak health and wholeness into the entire digestive system. In Jesus' name, I curse any deafness in the ears. Command the ears to open up. I curse arthritis throughout this body, in particular in the spine. In Jesus' name. Height to be restored in Jesus' name. Whoa, man, you're really growing. Probably four or five, five inches. That's why he's going, whoa. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I curse this leukemia in Jesus' name. Every prion associated with it is cursed, commanded to go in, in Jesus' name. I curse macular degeneration. I speak macular regeneration. In Jesus' name, I curse any and all forms of trauma to the right shoulder and pain to go. I curse any form of kyphosis. In Jesus' name, command to completely leave this body. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, and your back should be healed. Okay. Yep, she says. Sounds good to me. I'm going to go around for the left leg here. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, I just command all trauma to this left leg to go and the ankle in Jesus' name. Every bit of trauma to go in Jesus' name. All arthritis, all pain, all scar tissue to go in Jesus' name. Every bit of pain to go in Jesus' name. Say, thank you, Jesus. Now, check your body. It's like it's had a tight, tight band around it. A tight, like tight band around her ankle is now gone. It's all loose. Isn't that great? That is awesome. Awesome. Okay, so where do you have cancer? My lung. Your lung. One or both sides? Just, no, that side. I do have spots down here. Okay, so let's get rid of it. Okay. So, Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, I just curse any and all form of cancer in this body in Jesus' name. Every bit of trauma has to go. Every prion associated with it in Jesus' name. Every single cell that has cancer in it is commanded to go in Jesus' name, especially the lung. I speak a supernatural plant. You do a knees, you can do lungs in Jesus' name. Breathing to be restored to normal. I'll fear to go in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. She might need a little help back to her seat. That's awesome. Okay, those of you that were um, there Wednesday, um, those in the healing rooms, if you'll come on up to the front now, that would be great. I know several of you are here. Just come on up to the front, and you're my healing team tonight, and we're going to pray for everybody else. Hallelujah. Are y'all ready? I guess. Yes. And see, they've been, they were, they were really, they had, you know, intensive care education 
like, I mean, I just gave them an IV of Holy Ghost revelation. And, uh, and they have been, okay, they have been praying with me at different meetings along the way. Okay, so understand, God has anointed Joan. God has anointed them. God has anointed you. Okay, so, and then just to make sure that all of you that were on the healing team, you collect the white piece of paper. You can either leave them on uh, the altar area, and then we'll collect them, so they will go back with us. Were you at the healing rooms the other day? Okay, I didn't think so. Yeah, okay, got it. Yeah, these are the people, and you've all gone through the training on Wednesday, the hours of training on Wednesday, correct? You were there, and you were there. I remember you. Okay, I remember several of you. Okay, good. I'm going to have you spread out a little bit more. If you'll pick the, move that chair, then that way they can kind of go that way. That's awesome. It's kind of straight away. Yeah, there. Perfect, perfect. Okay, now when you come up to them, it's the hands of Jesus going to be laid on you. They may be different hands. They may be younger hands, older hands, but they're all anointed. They have seen miracles since I have been here. They're going to see more miracles tonight through you. Okay? And I'm going to do whatever I can do to continue having personal hands-on ministry. Because you can leave and have nobody pray for you. I don't ever want that. I don't want to say push one, you get prayer. Push two, you get this. And then you get it and you get an automated prayer. I don't want that. We have people, you know, that answer our phones and pray with people. I want the personal touch. And this is very, very important to me. Now, if there was enough time, I have no problem praying for everybody. But realistically, it's not going to happen. And so I'm so glad I had the opportunity to come uh, and, and, you know, train these people. We had somewhere about 150 to 200 there that are now trained throughout all of, of the North Island which is really exciting to me. And signs and, yes, signs and wonders and miracles are going to be happening all over New Zealand. And then when I come back, I'm going to do the healing rooms on the South Island too. So, which is really, I'm excited about that. Because you teach the healing rooms and people that really want to know about healing, look out New Zealand, right? And I know that the outer islands that are around here and different things, that you're going to be reaching them too. But, you know, I mean, when, when they told me today, I think it was 24, 25 nations represented in employment at the tea factory. You're called to the missions, just go to the tea factory. You know, go to Kmart. Most everything in there is made in China. So you have a foreign mission and it's right there. You know, you walk up to people all, or walk by people and they don't speak your language. You're on a mission field, you know, and you don't have to get shots or any of that other kind of stuff to do it, which is great. Okay. Well, thank you very much for having me here. I look forward to coming back and uh, we're excited about what God's done tonight, but he's not done. Isn't that awesome? So, Father, I thank you. I thank you for what you have done here tonight. I thank you, Father, for this huge deposit that we are leaving in New Zealand from the north to the south. And Father, I thank you that the miracles are going to continue to happen exponentially. And Father, I just speak uh, just an overdose of faith and expectancy for healing body, mind, soul, spirit, and finances. Father, I thank you for the offering that they gave. And Father, I thank you for supernaturally multiplying that offering in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Do you want to say anything else? We're good. Okay. Bring your uh, papers up. And, uh, and if you would, kind of, if you can kind of, those of you on that side, come up on this side. Those of you here and here, come up like right here. And then so that we don't have 100 people up here. Okay, so God bless you. Thank you so much.